Well, in addition to huge progress when it comes to our league position with Southend United this year, it's a season that's also becoming famous for cup runs as well. We reached the semis of the League Cup before bowing out to United. And today, we host Arsenal in an FA Cup quarter-final. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 69 of Saving South End with me, Daniel. We are back today with South End United. We are still in fourth place in the league, and that is despite the fact that we've lost our last away game very heavily, and we've now got to focus on a cup quarter final. I will caution that we've got a few tougher games coming up now in the Premier League. You can see the likes of United and Spurs that we were due to come back for an FA Cup quarter final against one of the big six is an opportunity that is too good to turn down. Arsenal are without a couple of players. We're still without Lesnik, who's out for the season. So if you're looking forward to seeing how we get on, as a couple of our boys have thrown their toys out the pram, despite our good position, and a couple in really unique circumstances, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. You can see our goal difference is pretty awful compared to the rest of the teams up there. We're winning most of our games very narrowly, which can very quickly turn. And we're also getting absolutely pumped on some of the occasions we do lose. So let's go and have a look at the schedule to see what's been going on. Because you can see three points separating third and eighth and then ninth not far behind either. We could yet fall away pretty dramatically. But the cup distraction today, well it comes off the back of a terrible league performance on the road. An important one at home. Now you were with me for the Chelsea game where we came back to win by three goals to one. We also then beat Nottingham Forest in the FA Cup fifth round. Lucas Daniel scoring a 94th minute goal after two from Rasmus Jensen, who's finally joining the party. We lost 5 2 at Everton, where we were four down at half time. It was just an absolute disaster. Daniel and Bernberg did get a goal each, but we were comfortably beaten. But a crucial win at home to Nottingham Forest last time. We came back from a goal down as Adonichi got one back just before the break. And Joe Hugill off the bench scored a late second. But now we have a complaint. Well, we have two complaints. One from a player I understand and one I really don't. Because Martin Cox has thrown his toys out the pram. He said, I want to go because you're not giving me any football. And that's fine. I've not been able to start him much. But he's featured in nearly every game, just mainly off the bench. But he has now accepted becoming an impact sub. So maybe he'll reduce his demands later. I don't know. And Europe could really help with that next year. But the second one that I really don't get is Lucas Daniel because he's gone and done the same but after our last match and he started three in a row. He's playing really well. He was finally finding form and he's now just gone on an absolute bloodbath. He's unhappy about the amount of time he's getting. But he's been starting every game recently. It's a really bizarre situation. He's starting to find form. He's starting to become the star and it's one thing I have talked about for years of being frustrated about. When you bring in a player and say they're going to be a star, they're going to be an important player, particularly when they've come from outside the continent, you always want to bed them in and you see it in real life. So the fact that that's not happening here and we're not being given that three or four months grace to get them into the team. I mean, let's be fair as well. He was injured most of the first half of the year. He'd come back for a game, come off the bench, then get injured again. And since he's been fit and since we've had an opportunity, we've got him in a team for every game and he's doing really well. So. I'm a little bit annoyed by the timing of that, I've got to be honest with you. But for now, we've got to focus on Arsenal in the FA Cup. As we've seen, we've got a difficult run in United, Spurs, Liverpool away, uh, Newcastle and Aston Villa, both sides that can cause us trouble. And to be fair, Sheffield United have finished near the top a couple of times, albeit we've had better days against them recently. But if we have a look at the Premier League table, of course Liverpool only behind us because of the administration. The top two, the Manchester clubs, are well gone. Then we dragged Chelsea back in the last episode with that win. And it's Liverpool, Arsenal, who apparently the title holders. What on earth's going on with them? And then Newcastle and Everton as well. This could get interesting, but depending on the winner of the FA Cup, eighth might be enough for Europe. And that could be an incredible feat for us. Could Liverpool have to miss out on Europe as well because of their financial situation? I'm not sure. They're in administration. I'm not sure if they've had a takeover yet. Not seeing where the news is there. No, finance is behind my head, but it says in administration. So it looks like they're going to be going. Who are the owners? It can't be the original, surely. Because 
A club like Liverpool realistically would never get into administration because they'd just get a massive offer from someone beforehand. But no, they've just got an administrator in and there is no change to their situation at present. If you look at the January window, they did sell one superstar. In fact, Harvey Elliott left of big wages as well. But there wasn't a mass exodus from the club and they've still got a lot of players earning an awful lot of money. But I wonder if next season will seal the real implications because there's a few of those experienced players who are out of contract. They can't offer them a new deal. And the likes of Taram Kanati, Gakpo, Alexander-Arnold McAllister, they could all be off without any replacements coming in. Though I'm sure there might be a bit of takeover news by the summer. For now though, we're going to worry about the FA Cup where United have just edged past Chelsea in stoppage time. 96 minute equaliser to stay in it. And then they win on penalties. That is heartbreak for Chelsea. And it's Southampton Barnsley in a quarter final, League One v Championship, and Brighton v City. If we could sneak past this and get the winner of that tie, you never know. There could be an FA Cup final on the horizon. Let's get through the tactical meeting and see how we get on, though. Newcastle playing Leicester in the Premier League. They've got a chance to catch us with a couple of games in hand. But unlike the last episode, there's a bit more of a familiar feel to Arsenal. Saliba, Rice, and all of the front three, Erdegaard, Saka, and Martinelli original players at the club they've obviously changed the keeper because it's an fa cup game but generally they're going pretty strong here so we're going to see what 11 we can put out we've got a week off after it so we've not got to be too worried about fitness and this is the team that played the last game so let's see what sort of nick it's in the dozy's still out injured harrison is back but short of full fitness katakatsuka is okay but will be on the bench morehouse and obek shah probably not good enough Obeg Sharp did make his debut against Nottingham Forest. And I'm looking at the 11. Do I keep persisting with Lucas Daniel? I think I probably do. I've promised him I'm going to reduce the number of unhappy players at the club as well. He complained about Martin Cox being unhappy. And then he got unhappy himself. One of those things. The only one I'm tempted to do, which I don't know if I'm going to yet, is up front. Because Hugo came on and got the winner against Forest. He's building his match fitness after injury. And Joe Wills does struggle generally. He's training really well and I don't want him to get an injury either. So I think that's the one change I'm going to make. Joe Hugo has stepped up to Premier League level remarkably. And he's got 10 goals this year. He's absolutely flying. So he's going to come into the team. And to be fair, Rasmus Jensen is doing pretty well as well. But this is the 11 we're going to go for. Ah, oh, do I do the keeper? I think I have to do the keeper. I've done it in every other round. So we'll change the keepers. Give Caljo a rest too. He did stub his finger in that Chelsea game last time, didn't he? So I'm trying to just manage his match load a bit. Two changes made then. We've brought in Hugo and Sadler at the two end of the pitch. Sadler is in goal with Adeniji and Ishmael at fullback. Williams and Parker, as always, the first two centre-halves. Yukalano and Sam Ammo out wide with Daniel and Jimenez in the middle. And then up front is Teddy Ivanov alongside Joe Hugo. How will we get on today? We've got quality on the bench and we are starting to build a squad now. The likes of Baranda, Bernberg, Takatsuka, Joe Wills today and Jensen. They're all first team level players. So let's see how we get on against the English champions. Not having their best season, but as we saw last time, they can score goals till the very end. Let's hope we can keep it 11 v 11. Have they got any more originals on the bench? Yes. So Ramsdale we knew would be there. but They've got Timber and Benjamin White as well. They've obviously got the star striker injured, that Robertson who played the last game. And Toklamati, who scored goals galore against us, is on the bench. So if they don't get it done early, we know they've got quality to come in. But now though, we're into the first half. Another sold out Steve Tilson Park. Getting 22,000 every week, getting that revenue in. We've broken our record twice or three times this year already. The last high, I think it was 700 grand. It'll probably be a bit more here. And this is what I mean. Now I'm playing Lucas Daniel every game, he picks up an injury. It's a bruised foot, so I'm going to give him till half time. But it really does become a frustration that if you don't manage his match load, he gets injured. And if you do manage his match load, he complains he's not playing. As Declan Rice picks it up on the left, would make that change at the break. As Saka loses it to Ivanov, great high pressure. Hugo nicks it, Hugo shoots. Towards the corner, it's good goalkeeping. And he distributes quickly as well, to be fair. With 10 minutes to the break, it's been a very quiet game. And at home, we're a game for anyone. As Sam Ammo puts the corner in. We saw it against Chelsea last time. We saw it from 3-1 down against City. But from our own corner, we're under pressure here. Saliba has broken away. 
And Arsenal have got one over in the middle. Avila picks it up in central midfield, carries it forward down the right. A space to run into, a chance to cross. Martinelli's there. Oh, we've been done by our own corner. That's a shame because we'd probably been the better side till that point. But with five to the break, we go 1-0 down in what has been a very even game. And that is frustration. These big cup ties, it's just not happened for us, has it? But Martinelli puts Arsenal 1-0 up. In the end, you just have to hold your hands up sometimes. In a year or two, this team might be ready to compete every time. But for now, there's still a few little deficits. Let's show something else in the second half. We weren't quite good enough at the back. I'm trying to look ahead as well and plan where do we need to improve this summer? Where do we need to get stronger? I mean, I'm looking at the left of midfield, but Sam Amo's had a brilliant season. I'm looking in defence, maybe the fullback areas, but Branda's improving, Adoniji the same. Ishmael's been rock solid this year. But I am going to make changes now. You can see from the stats we've been the better side in pretty much everything, but I'm going to have to make the changes. So on the left-hand side, Sam Amo will come off for Martin Cox. We're going to bring off Daniel, who had that knock for Peter Bernberg. In defence, I think I might go for Adoniji and just give Baranda a bit of a run out. And then up front, Joe Hugill for Joe Wills, who's got that match fitness. We'll save one because we don't want to end up down to 10 again. And straight after the corner, uh, straight after the sub, sorry, we've got a corner. Baranda attacks, but it's Saliba there again. Bernberg keeps it in. We're going to encourage the boys as Parker on his way back finds Ishmael. Keeping possession, keeping the pressure on. Miranda forced backwards the sub to Parker. Warming up to the pace of the game. Emir Williams. Don't go back to the keeper. Don't go back to the keeper. Parker to Miranda. You can just wait for that groan from the crowd. Parker to Bernberg. It's great Arsenal pressing. Yucalano forced into his own half again. And he concedes possession. Oh, it was a great trap by Arsenal. The pressure was insane. And Yuri and Timber the sub. Find Saka. And that's probably cup tie over, I'm afraid. We've got one change remaining. Do I bring on Takatsuka or do I give Teddy Ivanov a rest at this point? Because I'm not sure we're still in this game. I'm going to chuck Rasmus Jensen on. It's another man who's six foot four from a set piece. Oh, thank God for that. He didn't get on in time. Randa the sub has just got injured after a minute. Kerr Smith will have to go right back. We almost ended up with 10 again there. The amount of, I've noticed that this year, since the update, the January update that is, and I don't know if there's any other update to it, it might be a superstition, but it seems to be that people come on as a sub and get injured really quickly, so frequently, and that seems to be most of the in-game injuries, but with seven minutes added on, we've actually had the better of this game, we've had more chances, more shots, more on target, more corners, nearly half of the ball. And a very similar expected goals, but we lose 2-0 to two incisive counter-attacks. I said the lads played well because they did, but unfortunately, when you're playing against the best, that's what happens. Martinelli and Saka are in their peak, and we're 2-0 defeated. We're out of the FA Cup. We're out of all the cups now. We're in a great position in the league. And the question at this stage is what European competition can we try and qualify for? We don't pick up any money for that. Brander's out a month, but I guess with the international break, that's not too bad. And it's just about if Barnsley get through, we could have drawn them. I'll be gutted if I see Arsenal Barnsley in the semis. Emir Williams is struggling physically. Maybe I should have rested him in that game because I know we've got a week off now, but he will play for Wales. And that's going to be a worry. It's declining. He's not able to train as well. I mean, we'll try and get him a rest after the next game and we'll see how it goes because... Maybe the Welsh one he won't train at least, but I don't know how that's going to work. Let's get through to Norwich away. They're 16th, but they're a good side. They've had a few injuries. They've given us some great games before. We'll be back in a minute. See how we get on in that one. Well, I've been stopped in my tracks halfway through the week by this message. Our latest youth intake. And boy, is there some potential in here. We've got a striker from England who's got potential. We've got a Portuguese striker called Simon Cummins who looks pretty good. And we've also got the likes of an Irish right back, a Polish winger and striker. It's a pretty well crafted youth intake with players taken from around the world. So let's start with the star man, Darren Keach, a deep line forward from England. One and a half ability, four and a half potential. He can't really finish, but maybe as a number 10, he'd be all right. His personality's not great. But he has got a few good attributes. He's very naturally fit. 
With mentoring, he could become a star. Simon Cummins, the Portuguese man. That's a bit more like it. Driven personality. Good attributes across the board. Number 10 or striker. He's one who I think can make it as a pro for sure. And we have got to get players through that can make us a profit as well as ones for the first team. We've got a right back from Ireland who good core attributes, but at 15, he's not developed physically. So I'll wait and see how he gets on in the next few years. And then the only other two worth mentioning, Callum Graham, a centre half. He's all right. And then a right winger, Smoleri, who's actually a striker. Just a classic one of those advanced forwards. But again, the personality is not great. So under 18's mentoring is something we're very much going to have to get involved with here. Let's go and get through to the weekend though as Norwich await at Carrow Roads. Well, here we are. It's fitness test time ahead of a big game against Norwich City. And I say big game not because it's going to be defining for us in terms of a relegation or a Champions League spot or whatever. But we are in a fight for Europe and we've got to embrace that. We're down to fifth because Newcastle have won one of their games in hand pretty handsomely. And we know we've got a tough run in with just a seven point gap to ninth, which we would assume will miss us out on all European football. So we've got to be quite careful here because my dream scenario, ironically, is to be in the Europa Conference League because it's great for us next season in terms of the group stages. We can probably play our backup team and get through great, get great football minutes into youngsters at a decent level in a good competition. And we're competing with a Liverpool side that are in administration. We're competing with Arsenal who have just had a stinker. And we know how good Everton are from playing them a couple of weeks ago. But this game against Norwich, it's away from home where we've not been as great this year. But it also is a game against a team who haven't really got a relegation threat. Because ironically, after all of our troubles the last two seasons, this would have been a great year to be at the bottom struggling. Because... You're only going to need about 25 points to be safe. Look at them. The bottom three are averaging, well, what, about 0.6 points a game. It's pretty appalling, to be honest with you. So we're going to see this as a bit of a banana skin because Norwich have got a free hit. They've got as good a team as us on paper. They've just had injury troubles this year. And we've got a few issues ourselves where we're looking at the team and saying, how do we protect people? Miranda picked up that knock in the last game. Martin Cox has picked one up as well. We've still not got a dozy back. Harrison's fit enough probably for the bench, but I don't want to risk too much with him. And again, then we're looking defensively and saying we're a little bit short when it comes to substitutes. So Obek Shah will probably go in. Of course, we're going to bring Kaljo back from the FA Cup tie. We're going to bring Joe Wills back in up front, who is becoming a superstar now. Genuinely a brilliant 21 million gamble. And I'm going to stick with Lucas Daniel in the middle, but do I go for Bernberg? There's a few schools of thought there. He's someone who, at the moment, is not as worried about the football because he's in that settling in period and I want him to learn the language and all that stuff too. So we're going to stick, I think, with pretty much the same team. We've not got the option to change the fullbacks now because Branda and Lesnik are both out. We've not got the option at centre-half because it's an area we're really light on backups until Ovik Shah develops. And the front six basically picks itself with the injuries we've got at the minute. So the team from last week against Arsenal in the Cup, where we did play well, don't forget, Sees Caljo coming in goal and sees Wills coming up front. Otherwise, it's the same two changes, but the other nine are pretty much stuck in place now and we know who's going to start. So let's go and submit the team for Norwich away from home and just hope we can avoid what happened in our last away game in the league where we went 4-0 down in the first half. It's a Norwich team that have got a few players back and a Norwich side that have caused us big trouble before. Duran, Milovanovic, Rowe, Franka, all physical players. They've got a doggy at fullback. They've got Liam Gibbs back in from injury. I mean, they've actually got a really good side. And if it weren't for injuries, they wouldn't be down there this year. So let's tell the lads to prove a point. Let's get them motivated. They battered us in a cup tie where we somehow snuck through. So let's see what happens this time around. I'm not confident for this game. I've got to be honest with you. We'll see if we can deliver on the pitch because here is Lucas Daniel playing in with Parker and Adonigi. You can see them pressing us as Jimenez loses possession. Gibbs has picked up a knock already. That's a good sign for us. But Frank has broken away and he might have a goal advantage by the time he goes off. Franca to the byline, up to the back post. There's the height. We never scored a first goal in a game. We're fourth in the league. We're winning loads of matches, but even as you saw from the Forest one and from the Chelsea one in the last episode, from the Wolves Cup tie the one before, 
We just cannot score the first goal in a football match. It's frightening. I love to get your tips on what I do in the first 15 minutes because we are absolutely appalling at it. I'm going to break the lads because they've played really poorly so far. And I was worried about this game a good reason, but I never really panic either at 1-0 down because I know what this side does. It goes a goal down and then it often bites back. But Norwich have become a little bit of a bogey team for us at times. They always give us a good game. And here they come again with Gibbs, who might be injured, but he's floating past our midfield. God, we're getting torn to shreds. Milovanovic down the left. Chance to cut in. It's back to Franka. Good block and away by Adonigi. Is this going to be the difficult running or can we score on a breakaway? Ivanov down the left. Sam Ammo in support. Wills is in the middle. Oh, it's an awful tackle. I hope he's not injured. Get off. Bloody disgrace that is. Can we score from the set piece? Adonigi into Ishmael. Down towards Lambert. Parker heads it. It's tipped over by Johansson. Thankfully, Ivanov appears to be okay. We're going to encourage the boys now. This is probably worse for us because Norwich can just sit behind the ball. Big one to the back post is a terrible corner. The lads were running back before the keeper even claimed it. That's how bad it was. I'd rather they have gone and challenged him, but it's not to be. Do we have to go more positive? Because at the moment we're creating nothing. What on earth is that? What are we doing at the back? Can someone control the ball? Oh, please, next season, just make us good in the first half because then we'll be unbelievable. Sam Ammo cuts it into Lucas Daniel, finding some form despite his unhappiness as Jimenez gives it to Yucalano. Space to run into, it's a good turn, it does the fullback for pace, then cuts it back for Jimenez again. Chance to shoot, there's options with him, goes alone no, and that's unbelievable. Weaker foot off the underside of the bar. Not sure why it's showing us the red card bit again. But left footed, first goal of the season, a great build up as well. But what a strike. By Jimenez. He has signed a new deal now, I'm pleased to report, but it has got a release clause of about 40 million, which is probably attainable for the big clubs for him. As Ishmael finds Sam Ammo, could we go in ahead? We always concede the first goal, but we often outscore teams still. Sam Ammo finds Wills. That's a strike and a half. 11th goal of the season, and a week's rest has done him good. We're 2 1 up. We've turned it around. Yes, the red card has helped. But this has been the story of the season. You go a goal down, and then suddenly, we seem to wake up. As Omar has it at the back, gives it away to Ivanov, who's in, but gives Nick's the ball off him. Do not concede against 10. Row on the right, with it and opened up now. Sam Amo in, doesn't win the ball. Row back to Gibbs. This has been the craziest first half stoppage time you'll see for a while. Gibbs has got the ball again. Can we nick it and counter? We can. Jimenez has nicked it in the centre circle. Ivanov's running through. Has support both sides. The tackle falls for Lucas Daniel and for Joe Wills. And it's off the woodwork. A doggy at the second attempt gets it back. And we almost go 3-1 up on a stroke of half time. Incisive counter-attacking. A great turnaround. And with 11 against 10 and with a goal advantage, we should now be very much favourites to win this. The Champions League dream could be on, you know. Well, an hour on the clock. Norwich have managed one more shot, but we've not had a great second half ourselves, so we might just freshen things up with about 20 to go. I'm a little bit worried about Ivanov, yeah. He was on the end of that heavy challenge as well. So we'll bring on maybe Hugo. Or... No, I'm going to go for Jensen. He'll come on to the right of the front too. We're also going to take off Yukolano for Takatsuka, just to freshen that area up. And I want to make the change at right back with the yellow card. But the only real option I've got is Kerr Smith. Because Jimenez, he can play wing back. But he can't play in a back four. So Lucas Daniel will come off for Bernberg. Could have even brought Harrison back there. But he's not fully fit. And we'll get Kerr Smith on at right back. Saving one sub. I've been haunted by those last couple of experiences. Let's see how we get on now. We've not really played that well second half. I've got to be honest with you. But the lads are confident. They've got good morale. And we don't often concede second half goals. Famous last words as we return for a Norwich highlight. Lambert gets it forward. Gibbs on the edge to Milovanovic. Duran just wide. Parker with a great block again. I don't know whether to go positive because we can push them back. But their biggest threat is the counter. And I don't really want to get caught too high up the pitch. As the ball comes in, Caljo does well. And that should just calm things down for a minute. I'm going to make the final sub for the last couple of minutes. Wills replaced by Hugo up front. We know the quality he's got. And Wills not quite got the natural fitness yet. 
There's three added on. I'm not going to time waste in that. I don't want to invite pressure here. But Wills and a brilliant strike from Joaquin Jimenez have given us a 2-1 win. Again, not vintage. Again, a poor start. But we're winning games. We're doing what great sides do. We're not playing our best and we're picking up results. We return to the top four remarkably at the Premier League. And as you saw against Chelsea last episode and Norwich here, we just don't know when we're beaten despite the poor starts. Chelsea are up there still. Newcastle with a game in hand. And to be fair, we've got a tough run in against a lot of those sides in the chasing pack. Newcastle, Liverpool, Spurs, etc. Villa in there as well. But we've got ourselves into one hell of a position. And considering we'd never picked up more than 35 points before, I'm very much enjoying the ride here. Let's have a look at the inbox. Williams will get his rest now. We're going to send him away for a week after this. But let's have a look at the schedule for when we're going to return. And I think, unless anything wild happens now with us out of the Cups, we'll just do the final two. I mean, the final games at home to Villa might be a massive game yet. If it looks like it's going to be a very special season, we might do the Newcastle game before because they're in a real battle with us. So I guess when we get to Liverpool and Newcastle, We'll see how close that battle is, whether we've slipped behind them, etc. But if not, I think we'll just do the final two because if we're going to get into Europe of some form, which it looks like we might, next season's going to be a much longer one. But if you did enjoy this one, disappointment against Arsenal, where we were probably just the better team, but a fantastic fight back yet again in the league. I mean, you saw the Chelsea game and the Norwich game where we came back from behind. We did the same against Forest as well. I mean, I'm just looking at it there. Didn't we scored the first one against Wolves, but all of our last three Premier League wins, if you include the City game, all of our last 10 points have come after conceding the first goal in the game. So it is a pretty remarkable effort, but it is a worry how we're starting these matches. If you want to stay up to date and see how the rest of the season goes, then please do subscribe and turn that notification bell on. We'll be back with our new club again in the head coach tomorrow. We've had a very interesting week in the head coach. You can find that up in the eye above. There's also something special coming on Sunday, but this one will be back on Saturday in the meantime. You can also find links in the eye above to the Twitch channel and the football podcast too. And it's the final week of our partnership with HelloFresh UK. 60% off and free delivery on your first box, as well as two months worth of discounts. Thank you to everyone who supported it so far. You make a massive difference to the channel and hopefully you continue to enjoy it as much as I do. But we'll be back in a couple of days' time to finish the Premier League season with Southend United. And after years where we've been scrapping at the bottom on the final day, this year we worry about which European competition we're going to qualify for.